Hi, I'm Jude from Guitar Player Magazine, and here's another lesson on one of the many different topics that we cover all the time here at Guitar Player Magazine. This one I like to call ricocheting octaves, or you can actually do it with any interval you want, ricocheting intervals, if you will. It's kind of a cool mixture of hammered notes and pick notes, or halfway through it, you saw I went to the slap notes. Either way, it's the same general process. I start it with octaves usually. That's the easiest way to learn it. Here's an E octave at the seventh position. First note we're going to hit in example one is the ninth fret of the third string. I use my pinky, reinforced with the strong fingers, especially when hammering. You could use your third finger if you want. The lower note, seventh fret of the fifth string. Back and forth, right, as an example two. want to do is we want to put hammer-ons in between those two notes. So example three, we add one hammer-on. I'll exaggerate the picking notes so you can really see where it's hammered. Now it's very important that you get some fretting hand muting going on here because no matter what style you play, that's just key to making things sound tasty, loosening up your picking hand because then you don't have to worry so much. It can, for example, I'm going to hit one note, but actually I hit all six strings, but only one note came through because this this action over here. Let's hit the lower note. That gives us the power because we can hit all the strings, but only the notes we want ring through. That's all thanks to fretting hand muting. This is your best friend as far as muting. Your second best friend, of course, is your palm over here for muting. I like to kind of mute the lower note in each interval. So with that in mind, let's keep on moving here. We're going to do example four. See what's going on? We have hammered notes and pick notes in equal amounts. Pick, hammer, pick hammer. Kind of weird because we're hammering a string that we haven't even played yet with our first finger no less, which sometimes seems unnatural to players. Same thing in reverse on the third string. But we get cruising, let's get a little tempo going and it actually has kind of a musical sound. example four, that's eighth notes. One and two and three and four and. To really get this ricocheting sound though, we want to get example five, which is the same thing, but played in 16th notes. For example, twice as many notes per downbeat. So you'll see it's exactly the same moves. Just sped up to double time against the same groove. And again, I'm muting the lower notes and really bringing out the upper note unmuted so it really jumps out more. We can move intervals all over the place with this. Let's take a look at example six here. It's the fifth, expanding it to a sixth. Minor six. We do it at 110, which is kind of like first gear of this thing. That's a good tempo, but we can also play it a lot faster. Not that we're trying to be obnoxiously fast, but it's so easy with this approach and it just sounds cool in a kind of a hypnotic, kind of a machine gun kind of way. And if we look at example,
example seven here, we add some extra intervals. Which is kind of fun. We're gonna go. Right, but we're gonna do it at tempo, starting at 110. Same exact concepts, only we're just adding different notes beyond just the octave. Now, check it out. What if we put aside the pick for a second or even stash it right here? I kind of stash it right here. And instead of the pick, we use our thumb to kind of smack the note. Again, with this muting here, we can just kind of hit and get pretty close to the right string and that string will ring because all the rest of them are dead. And then if we also do this exactly 12 frets higher, 12 frets higher gives us the octave harmonic. Hear that, it's the same note, but the, the partial is ringing through, we're getting that octave. You can play melodies that way if you want. Right? In this scenario, we're going to kind of just use it where we did the pick before. And our muting is allowing us to do that freely. We can again take example seven and play it with our thumb. Here is the other example with the fifth going to the sixth. So now we're at part two, the second article of this topic, ricocheting octaves and beyond. We're definitely getting beyond here. We've added our lower octave, which is a low E string. We've got the octave on top and a low octave E. And we're also gonna throw in what I call a foxy lady style bar of the 10th fret. Caesar pick again too if you want. That always has a cool tone as well, either way. There's no rules or no wrong way to do it. Just find out the different ways that you like and you dig. Check it out though. So far we've been entirely in 4-4 four, four time, right? Done a lot of this 16th note stuff, this 1e and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e and a but what if we want to do one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. In other words, we want to do triplets. We can even go into 12, eight time. Those kind of triple meters. Well, we can do that the same exact way that we did this, but we just have to put the slap notes in different places in the bar, so. That probably still sounded like four, four to you because that's what our ears have been hearing this whole time. But if I give you some time, let me show you how I was feeling that. Three, four. Right? Let me give it to you a, a better count off so you can really feel how that is triplets. Or I should say the guitar part that I'm playing is triplets against that time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. We can add the low string to really kind of help us keep track of where the lick starts. A one, two, three, four. We should also try maybe 16th note triplets, sextuplets, six pulses per downbeat. 
Da 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 one to three four five six right per down beat. Let's slow this down to a more reasonable tempo. We were at one ten, but we're gonna put it down to seventy, and we're gonna do da 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 right. That would be something like this. Right? And the last example in the lesson, on part two, is... And we'll count it off. One, two, three, four. That's just a fun technique you can try. You can mix it up with the slap notes or the tap notes or the pick notes. Any way you want to slice it, take it any direction you want. I've shown this to different students and players and they all come up with their own variations and that's always cool to see it come back to me in different ways. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. Guitarplayer.com is your destination for all the coolest guitar news, lessons, gear updates, industry gossip, tributes, classic interviews, everything else. Thanks a lot, I'm Jude Gold.